Rookies can be league winners in your fantasy football leagues. Here are four rookies that you should be drafting in all of your fantasy leagues this year. We're welcoming in Zach from Fantasyland here. Good to have you here, Zach. Who's your rookie that you've been drafting a ton of this year you'd encourage them to draft as well? So I would say each year the best fantasy players are able to identify serious change in the NFL, right? Um, and this year I think one of the biggest changes is in New England, right? Bill Belichick, gone. New GM, new head coach, and Gerard Mayo, new offensive coordinator, and they've got a new quarterback. And nobody's asking the question, like, what if Drake May is actually good this year? What if he's actually this year's C.J. Stroud? If you think about it last year, C.J. Stroud, no one had that expectation. In preseason, he threw an interception. Ohio State quarterback, it was cool to, like, trash on C.J. Stroud. Well, if you bet on his wide receivers late in drafts, you were rewarded, right? Nihu Collins, ADP wide receiver 58 last year. Tank Dell was a wide receiver 78. They drafted Jalen Polk early second round in a stacked class. We know wide receivers in round two and three in the NFL draft can make an instant impact. Jaden Reed did it. Rasheed Rice did it. Christian Watson, George Pickens, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, A.J. Brown, Debo Samuel, D.K. Metcalf. Like there's a lot of round two wide receivers that can make instant impacts as a rookie. And if Drake May is actually good and you're getting Polk in like rounds, what, 13, 14 yeah. most of the time, that could be the steal of your draft. Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people would ask the question, uh, is Demario Douglas a factor there? A lot of people actually believe that Johan Baker could potentially be the wide receiver one there. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the weapons around him? And do you think Jalen Polk is a clear step ahead of those guys and he's going to be the wide receiver one there? I would say Jalen Polk and Pop Douglas are, I, I would view them in a similar tier for myself. I don't think Baker is ready to really contribute straight away. And I really liked him coming out of UCF, but I think he has a little while to go until he's able to, to step onto the field. But all indications are that Jalen Polk is the most consistent of that group right now. But I do think Pop is another great pick. Like if, if you're not going to get Polk, get Pop, get one of the two, whoever falls further. But Polk is obviously like that exciting young rookie where the ceiling is, you know, he'll play outside. You don't know you know, what his ceiling could really be. Yeah, and because you definitely don't want to take the wide receiver two in an offense like that. Like, no. if anybody, you are taking the <laughs> no. wide receiver one and you're rolling with it. The nice thing they have going for them is they don't have a dominant tight end, right? Yep. And so you're not going to get targets from there. They really have no dominant player at all. They don't. It's, it's pretty <laughs> wide open, actually. I mean, it, it's it's a worse version of the Packers is what it is. Like, yeah. I mean, you've got you've got a wide open wide receiver room, a young quarterback, and, and you know, I think the quarterback is going to be a big thing for all of those receivers this year, whether it's Jacoby Brissett, who will obviously start the season. Jacoby yeah can support uh, high-end wide receiver production, even yeah. if, you know, in this case, high-end. I mean, I think you'd admit that that Jalen Polk's ceiling this year is probably like a low-end wide receiver two or something like that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. If you're if you're in up like a, a Jaden Reed year, right, something like that, where at the beginning of the season, okay, might not be startable straight away, but eventually this is someone that, if the offense is good, could be like one of those guys you're consistently starting weeks 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I think everybody would admit that the quarterback play there is, you know, important. You know, got Jacoby Brissett starting the season, and then whether or not Drake May takes over, I think Drake May is also a guy that, especially coming mm. in, you see these rookie quarterbacks with rookie wide receivers. Yeah, uh, a lot of times they come in together in the NFL in the same class and they develop chemistry right away. You saw this with C.J. Stroud and Tank Dell just last year. Exactly. And so, uh, I totally agree with you. I think New England. I think a lot of people are kind of associating New England with terrible fantasy, terrible uh, team, terrible. I mean, yeah. they, they were just bad it, for, for uh, offensive purposes in the last couple of years they were just bad and all bets are probably is again but you're taking one of these guys in rounds 14 i was gonna say I, this yeah. is this is super low risk so yeah. um i'm gonna talk about a guy that's really like a late round guy and it's more like when you get into the rounds where you don't really know who to take oh you're almost gonna cut every single one of these guys uh, last night in our flock creator draft that we did, our flock league, uh, I actually took Jalen McMillan in like the 14th, 15th round. And with McMillan, he was a guy that pre-draft I liked over Jalen Polk from Washington, but he's going into a Tampa Bay Buccaneers situation where the wide receiver three right now, that competition is between him and Trey Palmer. And Trey Palmer is obviously somebody that I think could still take that job. However, I think all signs are indicating that Jalen McMillan is going to be the wide receiver three and is going to be on the field. And when you're thinking about how the Buccaneers are going to run three wide receiver sets also, you have to wonder, are they going to take Godwin out during three wide receiver sets if Godwin actually is running more on the slot yeah. and they're going to run Jalen McMillan and Mike Evans? Or, you know, are they going to leave Chris Godwin off and Jalen McMillan would be the odd man out? With that being yeah. said, uh, with Jalen McMillan, this is an offense last year that absolutely outperformed expectations. It would be great for a wide receiver three like that playing with two other really good receivers. Sure. Right. 
And um, I definitely think that in your later rounds of your drafts, I like taking a shot on him because I think he has a ton of upside. I think he actually yeah. does have some production upside. Sure. And the other thing is with Jalen McMillan, when you have wide receiver threes like that, and we talked about this with Jordan Whittington on the Rams, right? Yeah. It always one injury away from being the second option in that offense. Tampa Bay, also another team that doesn't have an elite sure. tight end. So. Yeah, well, you're talking to the right person because I said many times on our Dynasty channel that Jalen McMillan, wherever he went in the NFL draft, would be the steal of the draft, regardless of position. Sure. So I absolutely love Jalen McMillan. Uh, I think there's a little Keenan Allen to his game, like what he can do out of the slot. We'll see if they move him inside, outside. But I'm a huge, huge fan of his game. You know, Godwin has had injuries in, in the past, obviously. Mike Evans has been pretty consistent. But if Godwin were to go down, you put him straight into the slot, he could see a ton of targets. So I'm a huge fan of Jalen. And he can stretch the field, man. He can do everything. He's really like an all-around player. So... Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, he's got a good skill set. And, and one more guy here I'll throw in from the earlier rounds is Brian Thomas Jr. And there are kind of all these rookie wide receivers in that range, and, and they're all kind of going back to back to back, right? You've got Ladd McConkey in that range. You've got Keon Coleman in that range. You've got Brian Thomas Jr. in that range. My personal favorite most of the time is going to be Brian Thomas Jr. Because I do think while Ladd McConkey is the one in his offense, you're looking at a significantly better situation this year for Brian Thomas Jr. playing with other good receivers, right? Playing with Christian Kirk, yeah. playing with Gabe Davis, who his job is going to be the stretch the field. Yep. And so like when I'm taking my choice of those guys, I'm obviously going to want to take a little bit of all of them, right? You want to diversify and you also really don't want to take that many rookies. You really only want to take one or two in the top 10 rounds maximum at most. With that being said, I, I tend to gravitate towards Brian Thomas Jr. because yeah. I do think coming out of college, he has a skill set actually that he could be a one somewhere. Oh, yeah. I, I always thought that. I thought he was going to get top 15 draft capital. I think when he slid down into the 20s, people were kind of like really scared. Like, yeah. okay, like he fell a little bit, but I don't think it matters. I think this is a yeah. guy that, you know, when they look at Christian Kirk, Christian Kirk might not be there next year. Sure. Brian Thomas could be the one this year, in my opinion. I love this because Brian Thomas was the fourth drafted receiver in the first round this year in the NFL draft, but in fantasy drafts, he's going as the seventh rookie wide receiver off the board. And if you look at the Jags this year, they have, I think their top three in vacated targets, top four in vacated targets. Right. There's a ton of targets available, a ton of red zone targets. I think they have about 15 targets inside the 10, just ready to go. Brian Thomas with his body, with his specialty, you know, going up and, get, and grabbing the ball. I think he could be the real surprise this year from this I, class. I think so too. I mean, when you're drafting league winners, you obviously want to get the guys that have the volume opportunity and can yeah. jump up and be a winner. 100%. So. All right, appreciate you, man. Appreciate it. So we got Badaki here from Fantasyland as well. And Badaki, I'm curious what some of the, the, the rookies you're taking consistently in fantasy drafts this year. Um, let, let's go for it. Yeah, I mean, for me at the running back position, I think this is guy is pretty popular right now, but Jonathan Brooks. Um, yep. I love everything that he's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Avery celebrating me on camera. <laughs> yeah, we just saw in the back of the camera like, yes. Um, but yes, I absolutely love Jonathan Brooks yeah. coming out um, this year, going to the Carolina Panthers. Obviously getting drafted with that decent ca uh, draft capital as well. But the opportunity is coming his way, right? We all know Chuba Hubbard yeah. technically right now is going to be the starter. We understand he was a little bit injured in, in, in preseason and practice, but the expectation is that Jonathan Brooks is going to be starting maybe week three, week four, and we're going to see that transition of him getting this workload. What's interesting to me is Dave Cannell is coming from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and what we saw with Rashad White last year, right? I mean, obviously, he may not be the offensive coordinator, but we saw how he utilized, right, the running back position in Tampa Bay. Rashad White, top five running back finish this past year. He was fourth in receiving amongst running backs. I mean, we saw all that workload in the air. He wouldn't have, he's not as efficient. I think Jonathan Brooks is a better you know, runner. Um, I think he will be a, a lot more efficient on the ground. And another thing is they invested in the offensive line and in, in um, mm -hmm. getting yeah, um, Robert Hunt. Right. So yeah. I think that is a huge, huge, I think, boost for this offense in the backfield, specifically with Jonathan Brooks. Yeah. So his price right now is like seventh, eighth round. Yeah. Um, he was just taken in the seventh round in the league that we just <laughs> right, did with right, the guys. Really. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think that personally, I think that's a great price. Um, but I am curious what you think about Brooks midseason? Because when we get to Brooks finally starting or, or, or finally getting touches, sure. um, where you know since he's still rehabbing right now, going to be a few games until mm -hmm. he's ready to go. Um, do you think that we'll have a Jameer Gibbs type situation where he's splitting carries once he's on the field and people start freaking out in the middle of the season and you can get him cheaper like week six or week seven before they start to phase him in full time? Yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, right. Let's just say hypothetically, like you kind of mentioned week mm -hmm. three, week four, Jonathan Brooks comes in, he gets the 20, 
thirty percent, forty percent workload. And people with, start freaking out. People are like, "What's going on? Like, why? <laughs> yeah. Why is he not getting a hundred percent?" This is what he, that coach said. Right. You have to relax. You have to let him remember. He tore his ACL late December, if I'm not mistaken, or early December. He has to get acclimated. And that's exactly what he's doing right now. And giving him those two, three games at weeks three, four, five, that gives him a little bit more of like, "All right, I'm going to get my legs underneath myself." And then that transition is going to come. But I, I would say this. If you don't have Jonathan Brooks and you do want to trade for him, you could potentially get him cheaper. But I think when you see him, if there's a if he is available in your league right now for dirt cheap, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger now because yeah, it, yeah. Pe- once people see that he's on the I field, agree. they're going to be like, oh, let's wait. I know two. I know twenty percent of this. You know, twenty mm-hmm. percent snaps is like that's not good enough. I think people are pretty sharp now. So let's just go out and get get him immediately if you possibly can. Yeah, it's almost like a less sexy version of JT and Zach Moss last year. I, I remember when, <laughs> when JT was slated to, to start again or, or to play, um, we were, Avery and I were like, you need to sell Zach Moss. And yeah. some people were on the side of like, yeah, you should probably just hold Zach Moss and see what he does. Lo and behold, JT comes in, takes 30, 40% of the snaps, and Zach Moss is still producing. Yeah. And Zach Moss is still, you know, a viable flex option mm-hmm. for, for the next month, really. So um, I, I think you're going to see something similar this season with with Brooks and Chuba if yep. you get Brooks in the seventh eighth round I think it's worth taking a shot on Chuba in the later rounds as well just yeah, as completely insurance agree. but one of the guys that I'm going to have um, th- this one's pretty unpopular especially because there hasn't been a ton of like training camp hype or anything with mm-hmm. the guy and he has you know reportedly a lot of work to do like no rookie has a lot of work to do when they come into the NFL but Malachi Corley um, with it. the Jets I, I think he's being slept on a little bit because of the yeah. Mike Williams signing yeah. um, Mike Williams at this point is is like he is the football player made of glass like (laughs) that is what he is and um i've really liked mike williams for the past few years um you know since he broke out finally in his fourth year and uh was really successful with justin herbert he was really solid even last year before he went down with injury but coming off the acl in a situation where even though historically Aaron Rodgers has been so good at pushing the ball downfield, that's kind of exclusively what Mike Williams is going to do in that offense yeah. because you've got the alpha in Garrett Wilson. And at the end of the day, we don't really know how Rodgers is going to fare after coming off an Achilles injury and really exactly. not having a good season since mm-hmm. his last MVP season in 2022. Yeah. So, or was it 2021? I think, it was 20, I think it was 2021. It's, yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, I think Malachi Corley and his skill set is perfect as a security blanket for Aaron Rodgers in that offense in the passing game. He is like the yak guy, the yak Literally. receiver in this class. Yeah. And he's he's going to get targets like five yards downfield. Yeah. So if there's nothing available or Rodgers is under pressure because that O-line is still a little shaky, um, he's going to dump it off, in my opinion, to one of Brees Hall or Malachi Corley. And if Malachi Corley ends up gaining his trust, which we've seen Aaron Rodgers, you know, down the stretch, really lean on some guys that, that rise to the occasion, like mm-hmm. Christian Watson, his rookie season, and they end up being very productive. Yeah. I'm kind of betting on Malachi Corley getting that opportunity earlier in the season within the first month. And then if he doesn't work out, he doesn't work out and you can drop him and pick up someone else. But I'm curious what you think about that situation. Uh, yeah, I, I love Malachi Corley. I love him coming out of college and in, in specifically because of the yards after the catch. And yeah. when I saw him go into this offense and I was a little bit deflated when Mike Williams came off of the PUP list thinking that I was like, <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. was, I was in, I'd said it on our channel, you know, on our dynasty channel, I was like, Malachi Corley is a good stash right now because mm-hmm. of the opportunities that he could potentially be getting with Aaron Rodgers. Now, Mike Williams, like you said, is coming off. He's not potentially going to be a hundred percent when he gets back onto the field. And I, I mean, this may be a bold take, but I truly believe Malachi Corley is easily at the end of this, at the end of this year, could be a wide receiver two on this team. Maybe it's not as bold as you, as people may think, because mm-hmm. of how, like you said, Mike Williams yeah. is made out of glass. So the yards after the catch is there, and Aaron Rodgers will lean on him. And what happens if I'm not? I don't want this to happen. If Gary, uh, Gary Wilson misses a couple games, right? Someone else right. has to step up, and right. that's most likely going to be Malachi Corley. <laughs> if Mike it's, Williams it's is Lazard, a, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and that's another thing, like. Malachi Corley most likely is going to be playing in the slot or on the outside. And I think Lazard obviously can be moved around a little bit more. I think Lazard is, he's more the deep 
the deep field threat. So I think he plays more behind, in my opinion, um, Mike Williams. But for me, yeah, I love Malachi Corley coming into this year. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a bonus guy here, too. I'm going to go with yeah, another unpopular same. guy because I was just thinking about it. Um, a little bit off camera and a little bit now I'm I, I I can't not at least once in every like three or four drafts just take a shot on Roman Wilson in the 13th round yeah um, because I I personally have been a huge advocate for not drafting George Pickens at price because he really is a guy that makes his living off of being an outside wide receiver who is gets some nice contested catches, right. brings him down, has great highlight reels, and is going to get about 110 targets every year. And I don't, I, I think that's kind of what his ceiling is going to be and, and what he plays because he's not a, a consistent enough route runner. And mm-hmm. when you're looking at the quarterback situation, I don't trust Russell Wilson or Justin Fields to consistently get the ball downfield yeah. accurately mm-hmm. to George Pickens. So what does that leave? That, that, that leaves us with the slot wide receiver that they replaced Deontay Johnson with yeah. uh, a guy that I think Mike Tomlin has a love affair with. I mean, we saw it at the <laughs> senior bowl and Roman Wilson, while he has some questions from a route running perspective, it kind of reminds me a little bit of a Rasheed Rice situation last year. You're okay. obviously not yeah. in a Kansas city offense, but Rasheed Rice was expected going into the NFL to do things that he ended up not doing in the NFL. They had this whole plan where they're like, okay, he was dominant this way in college. We're not going to use him that way because that's not going to translate to the NFL being a slot receiver. That'll translate to the NFL. And I think that's what Roman Wilson is going to do this year. And he's going to be, in my opinion, the easiest target for really, really below average quarterback sure. play to get the ball to. So I don't, I don't know what you think about that, but um, that, that's kind of where I'm at with Roman Wilson. No, right no, now. I love Roman Wilson. I mean, he's currently not going on drafted right now, so you most likely can get him off your waiver wires mm-hmm. for sure. But yeah, wide receiver two on that offense. And look, I'm not a big George Pickens guy, most probably because <laughs> of, you know, Russell Wilson, right? Yeah. Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, I think the inconsistency is there. So we might see a lot of spike weeks potentially from Roman Wilson coming into this year but I'll give you a couple bonus guys I'm gonna bring two okay, I'll do okay. really quick one yeah. for my beloved New York football giants Tyrone Tracy um I love there him in the backfield obviously Devin Singletary is going to be the guy there but if Devin Singletary goes down and we kind of saw a nice little burst in preseason we saw a little scare in preseason but he is 100% fine he's back at practice so Tyrone Tracy I just drafted him with one of my last picks in the flock league yep. and the second guy just because we just got the breaking news. Yes, sir. With Jahan Dotson uh-huh. no longer with the Washington Commanders. How about Luke McCaffrey? <laughs> okay. I mean, look, okay. w- what is that going to look like? No idea. I know De'Ami Brown most likely going to be wide receiver two there. But can Luke McCaffrey somehow emerge from this offense? Maybe. Maybe. They took him, in the, if I'm not mistaken, the third round. A decent draft capital, right? Yeah. So yep. um, why not take a chance on Luke McCaffrey in the second half of the season? Maybe we'll see him kind of emerging in the first half. He, he could be a pretty good waiver pickup potentially. Yeah. And don't sleep on Ben Sinnott. We talk about Ben Sinnott mm-hmm. on this channel all the time. Both of those guys. I, I mean, you just lost the second best wide receiver in that room. So yeah. um, re- really liking all the options here. So if you want more of this content, make sure you like and subscribe the, to the video. And uh, we will be coming out with more of this content throughout the week. And we'll talk to you later.